Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of International Falls for Monday, September the 16th, 2019. I would ask all present to please arise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would ask the city administrator to note the roll call with all members of the council present. Move to the agenda, and we have a number of additions to the agenda. Under new business, item four, accept a letter of resignation from Andy and Lindsay Barnhart. Item five is to approve an agreement between Minnesota Department of Revenue and the City of International Falls for the collection of the local sales and use tax. Item number eight is the authorization to pay some back pay. And then the uh, minutes of the library under correspondence. Council's pleasure with the agenda. So moved with the additions. Motion by Councilor Droba to approve the agenda with the additions. A second. Second by Councilor Krause. Discussion on the motion or the agenda. Hearing none, question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Agenda is approved with the additions. Thank you. Move to the approval of the minutes, and we have the Tuesday, September the 3rd, 2019, regular City Council minutes. So, motion by Councilor Buller. Second. Second by Councilor Droba. Questions or discussions with regard to the Council minutes? Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. And the minutes for September the 3rd are approved. And then we have the minutes of the special city council meeting on September the 9th. Motion. Motion by Councillor Deach to approve. I'll second. Second by Councillor Kraus. Discussion on the motion of the minutes? Question. Aye. 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 I vote yes. Motion is carried and minutes for the special meeting are approved. Thank you. Move to the uh, resolution on transfers and payment of claims. Under transfers uh, to the general fund from the water and sewer fund, $5,559.67, and from the sewer fund, $4,392. To the permanent improvement fund uh, from the water fund, three, $33,333.33, .33, and from the sewer fund, a like amount of $33,333.33. .33. And to the reserve for capital outlay from the water fund, $19,136.17, and from the sewer fund, $6,624.25. On accounts payable claims, the City of International Falls claims $695,034.91, airport commission claims of $39,023.93, Airport Commission claims for the Schoberg Land Acquisition, $18,084.53. And then the Public Library claims of $8,483.33. Council's pleasure with the resolution on transfers and payment of claims. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba to adopt the resolution. Second. Second by Councilor Buller. Discussion on the motion or the uh, transfers or payment of claims. Are none question? Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted, approving the transfers and the payment of claims. Thank you. Move to the audience. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to approach the council at this time that's not on the agenda? Please. Uh, actually, I haven't seen the agenda, so <laughs> maybe it's on there, maybe it's not. Um, 
there were two things that, that came up at the, at the luncheon that I was uh, rather interested in. Can you, can you I guess, please first identify yourself and, oh, I'm sorry. and, your, and your address? And, and it might be helpful to have the, uh, the microphone so everybody can hear. At the uh, lunch and learn. Your, your, your name? I suppose I should turn it off. Oh, no, it's on. Your name and address, please. My, my name is Charity Trumpeter Oveson, and I live on uh, Fifth Street, uh, just a block and a half from here. Thank you. Anyway, for the um, you're welcome. Uh, I was at the lunch and learn, was it last? I don't remember exactly Wednesday. what day last week, last Wednesday, yep. but um, I found uh, a lot of the uh, items that they were talking about to be rather interesting um, and some real challenges for our community. One of the things that um, that came up was the budget needed for the airport project, was it like two, two point some million? Um, and when was that due again? Or when did we need that by? You would need uh, some of it in uh, 2020, 2021, and 2022. There'd be three years. That, okay. And the county would be paying half that. Okay. Um, one of the things many years ago, I was probably in my 20s. Um, a very dear family member um, was married at a hangar in down in the cities, and they had a hangar dance. And that was one of the most interesting, fun events I had ever been involved with. Um, I could see something like that being really appropriate since we're trying to raise money for an airport. Um, and the <laughs> I can see it also being a very community oriented kind of thing. I, it, it's interesting. I think it's something that could eventually grow into something really large. Um, I think that it's something that could be uh, put together fairly quickly, um, providing <laughs> there aren't any regulations, you know, that we have to deal with. Um, as far as that goes, it's quite a bit different than it was 30 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, um, in this dance, in, in this wedding, the... Um, the couple were married. They were in in a, a war era. Two th or, excuse me, in a World War Two era bomber plane, and uh, so that in itself was really interesting. But um, the whole wedding theme was based on the 1940s during World War II, and so you had to you had to dress in that era. And um, uh, so all of the music that was provided was also done in that era. Um, and there was lessons for ballroom dancing uh, and the jitterbug and all the other fun dances that were of that of that time. Uh, and it was very interesting to see some of the soldiers from that era that could still fit in their uniforms. I'm they all... were wearing their original uniforms. They were wearing their original uniforms. And the women were also wearing their original uniforms from, I don't even know what they called it now, Mewis? Was it USO? Wax. Wax. Thank you. <laughs> and then some of the some of the women were wearing um, their ballroom gowns from the era that era. Uh, the men were wearing their bobber jackets. It was just the coolest, coolest thing I had ever been involved in. And um, I can see the potential for that being a really wonderful, interesting fundraiser for the airport and a continued source of income 
and something that we could start uh, maybe locally and well to me locally is northern Minnesota <laughs> you know um, and uh, Canada um, market it to uh, the you know talk to the VFW have the various uh, veterans organizations you know um, maybe bring memorabilia from from the World War One, World War Two, uh, and the various uh, Vietnam War, uh, and have people maybe share some stories about the different things that they saw: funny, good, bad, sad. Uh, and it would be interesting too to have. Uh, Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I can see that really being something that we could raise the money we need and within that three year term. And maybe even sooner, the sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. But I can see things like for the kids, um, maybe offering somehow funding. Uh, some of the local pilots taking the kids for rides, you know, little, little short, quickie rides, um, just so they can see, I went up in the air, and that was so cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, um, I can see things like that, uh, getting the, the dance troops, uh, local dance troops involved, um, and doing dances of that era, you know, little productions of that era of music and dance. Um, also, I'm thinking <laughs> in a, more towards the evening, time for kids to kind of go, go to bed now. <laughs> and then the, the parents and older adults, uh, <laughs> of age I should say, uh, than, than actually having the hanger dance and possibly a nice dinner. I don't, I don't know what that would look like, but um, I also, my father was in World War II. And so, and uh, he wrote a poem uh, about what it was like Christmas time um, during World War II. But he didn't write that poem until 1963. So he had PST, PST, <laughs> and uh, they didn't have a name for it back then. And uh, so it would be interesting to have some information so people understand that. And I would love to share that poem. So. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. And then the other thing was, um, and, and I wasn't quite sure the whole meaning of what, what this was about stop signs. There, there's an area that they were concerned, the trucks and uh, the state wouldn't fund some well, stop signs. The uh, signal light at okay. 7th Street okay. and 53. Okay. Well, I have an idea when I got to thinking about that. I would love for International Falls to be the start of a new era as far as um, safety goes um, with lighting and, and uh, traffic and that kind of thing. I, I've been doing some research on 3D holograms Okay, so they're, okay, they're not going to fund the traffic light or stop sign or whatever, but if you saw a hologram of a little old lady trying to cross the road, or a child, or, or, or a parent crossing the street with their, with their child in the carriage, would you stop? Mm -hmm. You would, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, we might be pushing the envelope a little bit, but what the hell? 
I'm serious. When you look at the overall cost of what it costs to maintain the lights, the traffic lights, somebody knocks down the stop sign, uh, somebody doesn't stop at all and hits somebody, and yada, yada, yada. Oh my God, do you know what the savings would be? Absolutely do you know what the savings would be. Because you're not having to maintain the lights. You're not having, well, you still would have to maintain the hologram stuff, but it, it would be a different kind of maintenance. Um, and also, there is the attraction of it being something really unique and different, which would bring people up here just to say, hey, that, that's really kind of a role. You know, we can do this with that. And I'm already, I'm already going off on that. I'm like, oh, don't you know, Christmas lights all the way through International Falls, Rainier at the lake. Hologram. Don't you know, Santa loves to come in on this lady. <laughs> and the big bear, excuse me. Smoky. <laughs> Thank you, Smoky Bear Park. Hologram down. And you get to see him in his sleigh. And by golly, that doggone guy, he came down that chimney. And he brought all in those kids. Very good. Just see the kids having a blast with that. Well. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I am done rattling, and those were the two things I wanted to Very good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Ken, you want to grab the microphone? Yes, I can. <laughs> I thought maybe there'd be some dialogue, but oh. I can do that. Not a problem. Anyone else that uh, wishes to uh, approach the council at this time? Right, we will move to the consent agenda. And the item under the consent agenda is to approve the travel and training for the fire chief and the captain to attend fire instructor one and fire officer one at Camp Ripley, uh, various dates in October and December. Council's pleasure with the consent agenda. Move to approve. Motion by Councillor Krause to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Councillor Deach. There being no uh, <coughs> discussion on the consent agenda, call for the question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Move to uh, new business. Item one under new business is a resolution approving an application for an exempt permit for the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association Trails End Chapter to conduct a raffle to be held October 10, 2019 at the Elks Lodge. Council's pleasure. Motion. Motion by Councilor Deach to approve. I'll second. Second by Councilor Krause. Discussion on the raffle or the motion? Hearing none, question? Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted, approving the raffle for October the 10th by the Minnesota Deer Hunters. Item number two under new business is to accept the letter of resignation from Patrol Officer Jill Ellsbury, effective August 30th, 2019. And the appointment of Patrol Officer Michael Bounds to full-time status effective September 1, 2019. I think I'd like to have those in two separate motions. Motion on the resignation first, accepting the resignation. I would make the motion to accept the resignation of Officer Ellsbury. Motion by Councilor Droba to accept the letter of resignation from Officer Ellsbury. I'll second. Second by Councilor Kroos. Discussion? Chief, did you have any points that you wanted to make on that? Not really, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, Officer Ellsbury uh, relocated out of state with her family, and that simply creates a vacancy in our roster, and I would recommend uh, Officer Bounds be put to full-time status. 
And the uh, and Officer Ellsbury uh, was doing the uh, Dare program, and so someone will be picking that up, I assume. We are researching that. Very good. Thank you. Further discussion. Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried, and the resignation is accepted. And then we have uh, a appointment of Patrol Officer Michael Bounds to uh, full-time status, effective September 1, 2019. Move to. Motion by Councilor Kraus. Second. Second by Councilor Droba. Discussion. Councilor Bullard, please. Time status since, I'm sorry? Has he been full-time status since September 1st? Basically, yes. We moved him into uh, Officer Ellsbury's slot. Right. Further discussion? <coughs> Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. An appointment of Michael Bounds as a patrol officer is approved. Thank you. Item number three is to approve the FBI Headwaters Safe Trails Task Force Memorandum of Understanding um, with the International Falls Police Department. Mayor. Please, count, uh, City Administrator. Uh, this particular item, we received a uh, copy of a Memorandum of Understanding, which would be a standard operating procedure for the FBI uh, to enter into an agreement with us to participate with them as part of the Paul Bunyan Drug Task Force. Um, that particular agreement indicated it was for official use only and I submitted a request to the police chief on Thursday morning requesting permission to include it in the packet. And um, as of this time, we have not received that authorization from the FBI, so that's why you don't have it before you. Uh, but it is... Uh, uh, I have reviewed it. It's fa fairly standard uh, documentation, and it would be everything that we would anticipate as being customary with those kinds of um, operations associated with the Paul Bunyan Drug Task Force. So um, I think uh, in conversing with the chief before the uh, beginning of the meeting, um, we're comfortable recommending that the council authorize the uh, mayor and myself and the police chief to execute that agreement. And um, without authorization for our, for the FBI to release that, um, we think that's what we need to do. If the council's not comfortable with that, we can wait and see if they are, their headquarters will make a decision about allowing us to release it. Uh, but as of yet, we don't have that authorization. Very good. Council's pleasure with the approval of that memorandum of understanding. Authorizing the uh, mayor of city Administrator and Chief of Police to execute. I'll make the motion. Motion by Councilor Deach. I'll second for the sake of discussion. Second by Councilor Kraus. Thank you. Discussion, please, Councilor. Chief, what's your take? Uh, thank you, Councilor Kraus. Uh, so, as you guys all know, that the the International Falls Police Department has been um, uh, in business with the Paul Bunyan Task Force or attached to the task force for now going on two years. Um, as a part of that task force, um, the <coughs> FBI has their Headwater Safe Trail Task Force, which kind of attaches with that. And a number of the agents that are, uh, that are associated with the Paul Bunyan Drug Task Force are actually deputized federally to assist the FBI uh, in their efforts, which go on to reservations and, and areas where your, your uh, uh, run-of-the-mill uh, police officer can't go. They don't have the authority to do that. So uh, this gives us authorization to assist them, but furthermore, it brings their resources to us as well. So this has been, in, our area has been in, uh, sort of, uh, I don't want to say overlooked, but hasn't had a lot of that um, extra attention for many years, and I think this is an opportunity uh, to join forces with the FBI and, and uh, bring their resources here as well to help us with uh, different things such as cross-border uh, issues, um, human trafficking, and particularly drug trafficking. Um, I think our efforts with the Paul Bunyan Drug Task Force have been uh, um, very successful to date. And this, this agreement would be a temporary agreement. It's kind of a trial run between the city and the feds to see if, if it's a fit, if it works for them and it works for us. 
Um, so if, if, it is a, if it is a success, as we hope it will be, we would then come back and revisit um, with a different agreement, which would probably be bringing the, the, uh, the city some financial gain and recouping uh, any overtime wages, training, uh, as far as in vehicle and equipment. So um, if it works out well, I think that we'll be bringing some really good resources, investigative resources into our area, but also it could benefit, benefit us uh, budget-wise going forward too. Good. This agreement right here has no, has no um, cost effect on the city. Thank you. Further questions? Other discussion? There are none question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion is carried and uh, approval of the memorandum of understanding and the authorization for signatures is approved. Thank you. Item number four under new business is to accept the letter of resignation from EMTs Andy and Lindsay Barnhart, effective September 29, 2019. So moved. Motion by Councillor Droba. Second. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion. <laughs> I think the Barnharts are leaving the community for a period of time, is my understanding. But they've been good, uh, good EMTs. Further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion is carried and letter of resignation is accepted. Item number five is to approve the agreement between the Minnesota Department of Revenue and the City of International Falls for the collection of a local sales and use tax, authorize the finance officer, the deputy city administrator, and the city administrator to access the state tax information. City Administrator, you want to bring us up to date on this one? Sure, Mayor, Councilors, <clears throat> this is an agreement that the uh, state is requiring through the Minnesota Department of Revenue to, um, it lays out in a little bit more specific information how uh, uh, this process will work when the state will be dispersing the sales and use tax revenues to the city of International Falls. Um, and, uh, and then also, uh, as part of this program, it requires certain staff to have access to the information. And, and before anybody with the city can have access to the information, they have to complete a a non-disclosure or disclosure agreement and training so that uh, no unauthorized information is distributed to the public. So I've included that um, sheet as part of the last page. And as you pointed out, Mayor, in your introductory comment there is that uh, the finance officer will be our primary contact and then myself and the deputy city administrator would be secondary or alternate contacts um, with the Department of Revenue as this process moves forward. So this agreement is necessary to be executed and submitted to the state. Um, I believe the deadline date was September 23rd before uh, the sales and use tax goes into effect uh, starting on October 1st of 2019. Council's pleasure with the agreement? So moved. Motion by Councilor Buller. Second. Second by Councilor Deach. Discussion or questions of the city administrator? I guess I have. Councilor Grobo, please. Um, so we, we're putting the tax goes into effect on the 1st of, uh, of October, which is just in a couple of weeks. I know that months ago we contacted uh, businesses through the Department of Revenue saying that they were going to call to a collection. Is there anything that we're doing additionally as a city? to let the business community know that they need to collect taxes starting on October 1st? We, we have not. That's been a responsibility, again, that's principally the Department of Revenues because they already solicit and require um, businesses to submit the sales tax for state purposes, and this would be an additional one. And so they administer that whole program. And, um, you know, the way the revenue stream will work is there's some businesses that pay sales tax on a monthly basis, some that pay quarterly, and some that only pay annually. And um, so um, 
it's really within their purview to do that. We haven't. I mean, I think that there's been a great deal of information in the public because of our referendum going back to November of 18. City Council's held a couple of public information meetings. I know that the journal and the radio station have both been very good about um, passing on information as the council's considered it. So um, there is a requirement um, for the city to include the resolution authorizing this, and I believe the ordinance as well, on our city website, and it actually is required by law to be posted on our website for a period of uh, the entire term of the sales tax, which is uh, projected to be as long as 30 years unless the council terminates it earlier. So it's on our website, um, and we weren't anticipating doing anything in addition to that. So my only question is that that's how it's going to be collected, but just as a reminder of some sort for the businesses that they have to change their tills on the 1st of, of October, right? And I know that they've received direct mailing notifications from the Department of Revenue. Just a concern I have. I'd hate for some people that pay monthly at the end of the month to realize that they should have been collecting all month. That, sure. That's my only concern. Further discussion? Hearing none, question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and approval of the agreement between the city and Department of Revenue. Approved. Thank you. Move to item six. Under new business to set a public information meeting prior to the city council's consideration of the municipal <laughs> consent agreement with the Highway 53 reconstruction project. Is there a date that would... Um, Council would like to have a public information meeting? Mayor. Please. <clears throat> if I could just offer a couple comments. The, as, as part of the Highway 53 reconstruction project, uh, MnDOT sends out what they call a municipal consent form, and the municipality has to consent to the project or do so with, with certain conditions. And so we need to have some conversation internally among the city uh, council members as well as the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee to determine what kind of conditions, if any, we want to put on the project. Uh, MnDOT's nearing their 60% design completion um, standard or, or, or period. So uh, we have until October 23rd to respond. We did ask for an extension. Uh, that original date was, uh, it was supposed to be 90 days from when they first submitted a letter to us. That was in August and we extended it uh, 60 days to October 23rd. So I know in past conversations, the city council has been very careful to want to try and get some public input before the city council actually took action on, on what kind of an agreement and resolution we prepared um, as part of the municipal consent process. So if we have to have notification to amend that on October 23rd, the last city council meeting we have before that would be October 21st, which is a Monday. So we would need to have some kind of a public information meeting sometime between now and prior to uh, the 16th of October to really give us some time to put um, the needed resolution in uh, response to MnDOT together for the council to act on not later than October 21st. And and that as we are now, uh, we have three weeks between now and the next city council meeting, uh, which is October the 7th. 7th. And, 7th. and so I'm wondering if that uh, week of September 30th and the beginning of October, if like the 2nd of October would be a good evening. I'm open. What is the set? What day of the week is the second? It, it's a Wednesday, Wednesday, October the second. Yep. To a six thirty public meeting on Highway fifty three. Is there a motion to uh, set that meeting? So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. Second by Councilor Deach to set the date of. October 2nd at 6.30 p.m. here in the council chambers for a public information meeting on Highway 53. Further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and meeting is set. Thank you. Item number seven under new business is a uh, 
timeline for the review and approval process for the proposed comprehensive plan. Councilor, you want to lead us on that one? Uh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we, it was discussed earlier, and I think Ken was the one who, uh, who was giving the, the timeline and had an idea of shortening up the timeline in some capacity, so I would just hand it over to Ken at this point since he wrote the email. Well, actually, I appreciate that, uh, Council and Mayor, but, but this, I, I instructed our um, planning consultant and then Antonio Roselle with the Community Design Group, and they've been working on preparing our comprehensive plan, updating our zoning ordinance, and also updating our subdivision ordinance. And so I asked him, we had a, a meeting as a Committee of the Whole earlier today to discuss the status of the comprehensive plan and review a, a what we hope is a final draft um, and give us a couple of weeks to try and review that and then move forward with the final adoption process. So I asked him to lay out a process that's identified in the email that you've received and that's actually was prepared by him laying out. We had that uh, initial walkthrough today on September 16th. Um, he's laid out uh, about three weeks duration for the council and planning commissioners and the project steering team to offer any final revisions they might see in the draft and then uh, um, allow the consultant a couple weeks to uh, make any changes that are necessary and then um, on October 21st which is that second meeting in October have the council and the planning commissioners uh, review the final changes in the draft and then uh, and then the city would release it on October 23rd um, we are required by statute to have a public hearing which is held by the Planning and Zoning Commission or the Planning Commission rather and the uh, uh, we have to allow the adjacent jurisdictions uh, meaning other s cities 30 days to review it and the county 60 days to review the plan so um, assuming that the county would need its full 60 days that's actually pushes us off to um, <coughs> What is the date here? November 23rd, I think. Um, well, actually, I take it back December 23rd before the 60 day review period would be complete. So um, I think it would probably be appropriate. Uh, I guess we can go forward and have the public hearing, take public hearing or public comments on changes that should be proposed, and then await the uh, uh, county's response to our 60-day review and comment period and then make final changes to it and then move into uh, uh, adoption uh, in January. So in, in this proposed layout, January 21st would be the latest date. Um, it could be an alternative date would be December 16th, which would be the earliest one if we wanted to move out at a faster pace. So. I apologize. I came in at the very end of the discussion, uh, having been in Duluth for a funeral today. But, um, councilors, uh, thoughts on on and I, and I heard the discussion about the county um, giving them the whole sixty days and then not planning action until after we got their comments. Yes. That would put us into January? Well, the 60-day period would expire if we start and we release it for public review on October 23rd, which I think is very feasible and, and doable. And then, and then in uh, um, sometime between December 23rd and, and a meeting from, uh, he's identified January 15th, um, he, would, he would wait for the county's comments and then incorporate that uh, into the plan. Um, if the council thought that was appropriate, so we need to have some meetings here. But um, he's identifying December 16th as a date that the plan would be presented to the city council for adoption. That would be the earliest one. Or if you want to wait till we get the co county comments, which I think is probably appropriate, then it would be pushed off into um, January and probably January 21st. Date. Interestingly, the, the county had spent a considerable period of time reviewing their own comprehensive plan in the early 2000s and then ultimately never adopted one because there was a lot of, uh, uh, at least it was reported that there was a lot of uh, 
implementation strategies and goals that they thought were maybe outside the realm of what they really wanted to tackle so they don't have an existing plan of their own um, ideally we would have them adopt our plan and then it, be, it can be part of their comprehensive planning Part of the reason in the statutes for having a review and comment period by adjacent jurisdictions is you can kind of compare where you need to make utility linkages or, or comparisons or, or um, services. You can uh, uh, coordinate road projects, road connection projects, trail projects, those types of things uh, can be coordinated with the adjacent jurisdictions. And of course we try to do that, but we need to comply with the statutory requirements for review and comment. For us, the only other adjacent jurisdiction really to provide it to is the city of Rainier because we don't have any townships in Kuchin County and then also the county. Do we, the, does the city of International Falls abut to Rainier? Yes. 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 Oh, I didn't realize that. Just on the other side of Second Bridge, there's three residential lots. I think one of them might be the DNR, but there's two or three residential lots, and then that immediately borders okay. the city of Rainier um, in the head pond area of the Rainy River. Okay. Yeah, with the recent annexation of the okay. Jameson and French edition. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So the council's pleasure with uh, setting a date to Put the draft public uh, draft plan for public review. Uh, would we be ready by October 21st? I would probably recommend, Mayor, just moving forward with his recommended plan, and and then the question, the only decision point for the county is, or for the city council is, do you want to wait until we get the county comments, and uh, or are you comfortable in? Um, having a public hearing on the uh, December 2nd date that the um, consultant has proposed. I, I think it would be um, not well accepted if we, uh, if we don't wait for comments. And so I, I would certainly recommend waiting until January the 21st for adoption. Mr. Mayor? Councilor Grover, please. How, however, if, if we're going to wait and we're going to hear what the, what the county has to say and have their input into it, we're going to get the input of our, of our residents at the same time. Mm -hmm. With that being said, we could put both of those into the final document if, that, mm -hmm. if, it, if it makes sense. I don't think we're putting the cart before the horse by waiting for what the county has to say put that into the, the document and then bring it to the citizens and put whatever last minute stuff we need to put in there from what their input is. To me, it makes sense, get all of your input and then put it into the document. That's my thoughts. I think we could do. And then adopt it after that. And then adopt it after that. And then that gets us to the December. January. January 21st. January 21st. Jen yes. Yes. That's what, no. that's what I recommend. Make the motion. No, that gets us to December 16th, doesn't it? No, because the county comments aren't received until January 15th. That's okay. If they go the full 60 days, okay. that's how much time I understand. They'll have, so. I understand. Fair enough. I apologize. We got you. All right. So um, we would adopt the, uh, the calendar for the comprehensive plan with the uh, plan presented to the City Council for adoption on January 21st of 2020. Is there a motion to move that? Motion by Councilor Buller. I'll second. Second by Councilor Droba. Further discussion? Not question. Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Comprehensive plan process is approved. Thank you. Item number eight is authorization to pay back pay. City Administrator, please. Mr. Mayor, briefly, um, uh, staff, with the uh, 
the city council's authorization has been reviewing um, the pay that we've been making to the paramedics and we discovered that um, the paramedics are due back pay for all hours worked over 40 hours right now our contract with the paramedics say they don't get overtime until after 48 hours worked so the statute of limitations is two years and so we've completed that analysis and um, we had a brief conversation um, earlier in the day about that and and um, we've indicated to the union that we would have a decision made by the end of September and this is our last regular meeting so the uh, back pay that would be due um, I left my sheets downstairs after we've concluded our previous meeting but it was just it was between 16 and 17 thousand dollars from February 4th of 19 back to February 4th of 2017 and there was roughly another thirty six hundred dollars I believe it was from February 4th to the present time so we want authorization from the city council to uh, move forward and and pay that back pay to the paramedics for overtime pay that's due them per the fair labor standards act and uh, we will include that in the payroll checks that go out on tuesday of next week so moved motion by councilor droba to approve the uh, back pay to paramedics uh, all second, second. Oh. Either one. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, okay. No second. Okay. Motion by Councilor Droba, second by Councilor Kraus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Further uh, questions or discussions with regard to the back pay to the paramedics? Seeing, hearing none, question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and back pay is approved. Thank you. Any other business under new business? Thank you. We'll move to uh, reports of uh, boards, committees, and department heads. City Administrator, please. Uh, Mayor, I don't have anything specific to report. I do want to take an opportunity at this time to um, introduce Todd Ojala to the City Council. Todd. Uh, is a, a International Falls native, a graduate of the high school here in International Falls, and he's uh, got extensive experience in uh, in uh, software development, uh, some education, and I'll let him talk a little bit more about that. But Todd's just relocated from the state of Florida. Uh, he arrived uh, late last night. His first day of work will be tomorrow, but I wanted to give him an opportunity to maybe come forward at the table and just say a few words about his background and experience. And he'll be filling our information systems administrator position, which is a full-time position, and assisting all of our departments with uh, IT needs and issues, software development, networking, and those types of things. So he'll be working to assist us in, in that area, and we're happy to have him on board. So uh, Todd, can you come forward and say a few words? Sure. Thank you. Todd, please. Welcome. Thank you. It should be. It's on. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Ken, Mr. Mayor. Happy to be here. It was, it was a long drive, and uh, it got cooler as I got north of Tennessee. <laughs> much cooler, so that's a welcome relief. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm really happy and excited about taking this position. Um, I've had over 10 years of experience in, in the IT and software industries, and I'm looking forward to bringing that experience to, you know, to bear and helping the city with all of its IT needs. I even thought of some uh, interesting new ideas uh, you know, for um, some applications that you know, I'll talk to Ken about in the next few weeks. But uh, mainly, I'm happy to be here. Um, I have I worked in the software industry for a Silicon Valley company, um, a startup, in the last few years. I also work for a, a Minneapolis startup that has become fairly successful. And uh, let's see, I have an experience in networking, software development, technical writing, uh, technical account management. So I'm I'm really looking forward to, to this position because I think that it it will allow me to utilize a lot of those different people and technical skills. So if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to take them. 
Mayor, I would just add that <clears throat> Todd uh, was delayed in getting here because of the hurricane, so he wasn't able to leave Florida as early as he would have liked to. So uh, he did have to suffer through all the preparations and, uh, and tribulations that go with uh, trying to weather a hurricane. So um, he left late. But you dodged the hurricane. Um, yeah, I actually decided to stay in San Augustine for the hurricane. A lot of people evacuated, but I figured it was my last chance to uh, be in, in a hurricane. So. I, it may have been foolish, but I, I boarded up a few windows and got some bottled water and some batteries, and, and, I, and I stayed. And, um, for some reason, the hurricane didn't come close to 100 miles, so it was, it was a bit disappointing, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the water actually did rise halfway up the driveway. Um, literally, the ocean came down my street, um, so that was, and then there were young people wandering through the streets with beer in their hands. and. <laughs> Waiting to the seawater, but it, it was interesting. Yeah, so I was delayed. But Very good. No more hurricanes. <laughs> Not near National Falls. Welcome home. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thank look, you. look forward to your contributions. I don't have anything further, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, as you all know, the uh, ICO company took down their building that had been vacant for many, many years uh, out on the highway. Uh, and now their uh, attorney has requested that we dismiss the case. Uh, and I indicated to him that we'd be happy to dismiss it if they reimbursed us for the costs that we had in having to file a lawsuit and, and certain notices of Liz Pennons that have to be filed and recorded. And so it's about $600 in costs. And so far they haven't agreed to pay those, um, but uh, I anticipate they will. One, if they have a hearing, it would probably cost them more than that to have their attorney come up here and argue about those costs. So uh, uh, the building's gone. Uh, the issue is now whether they're going to reimburse us the out-of-pocket costs, and that's not including any attorney's fees that I've billed the city, just our expenses that we've had to pay with the court uh, and with the recordings. And so hopefully that will be resolved soon. The other two cases that we're pending are set uh, to be heard on October 2nd. So, very good. Thank by, you. By our next meeting, we should have more information on that. Councilor Bullard, please. Did they remove concrete too? I haven't been by there lately. No, the concrete is still there. I mean, there's still some work to be done, but I. Are they going to remove it? I believe so. Kelly would probably know better than I did about that. But. Mr. Mayor, that's actually the same question I have. I, I'm wondering if the council is uh, satisfied with the condition of the property as it stands right now, because I no. I have some concerns about it. I don't know if there's any safety concerns, and uh, so um, um, I guess that's something that I was going to try and have a conversation with the council at a, at a committee meeting or something like that to see what uh, we want to do going forward. Um, I, I do know that an out-of-town contractor was here and removed everything from the existing grade up. Uh, the the metal supports, structural supports for the canopy were cut off two or three feet above grade and they're still there. There's a lot of piping that's still in place. And um, when we had an informal conversation at a staff level, we were suspecting that they don't want to disturb any of the soils there, perhaps because there was uh, underground storage tanks. But my understanding is that those tanks were removed going back uh, probably about eight years from now. So. Uh, presumably there shouldn't be any soil contamination as a result of that but um, I do know that uh, another party has expressed interest in purchasing the property provided the building was removed and so um, uh, it might be appropriate for the city attorney and perhaps myself to converse with their attorney and find out what their plans are and what kind of uh, purchase commitments they have from other parties and if that other party is satisfied with allowing that um, existing concrete slab to remain there for their purposes uh, that might be acceptable from my perspective from the city's standpoint but um, there's a lot of unanswered questions I guess in that regard yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say that I I don't think that the the job has been fully committed I I had spoke with Kelly very briefly about it and there were too many questions at this time to say that the the 
the job has been finished. I believe the sign is still up. I know the concrete's there, and as Ken had just pointed out, there's still piping that's been cut off, and in some capacity, whether it's a safety issue or it's just a new different type of an eyesore, um, I, I think that the job needs to be finished in some capacity more so than it has been. Well, I'll let, I'll let their attorney know then that not only do they have to pay the cost, they have to get the site into uh, conditions acceptable to our public works department. Or and, and a follow-up on the billing, though. As I understood it, there was going to be bills uh, that were added into them for us cutting off the, the water and cap, capping the water, and there were some other bills that the city had incurred for them to demolish. Th those I've not been apprised of, but I can certainly add those to our costs if... Uh, Somebody gets them to me, yeah. And, and you think those are costs that are outside of normal uh, uh, con disconnecting water and sewer? I would have to assume it was. I, I don't know, yeah. I, I knew something we would just have to So we need at. to have uh, the Public Works, Public Works okay. Commissioner uh, let us know. All right. Further uh, questions for the city attorney with regard to that? And I have nothing further, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We look forward to uh, your report uh, after the, uh, the next uh, case with the uh, court. Thank you. Chief Maston, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, um, activity report for the police department for August 2019. Um, in the month of August, uh, we had our, our new officer, uh, Officer Caston, su successfully completed his field training uh, program and is now out in a squad car on his own doing very well and happy to work. Um, our officers are busy assisting with the Bass Championship act activities. Um, Officer Franz and Deputy Sari, who are Alice instructors, held a training and presentation for the staff of the Little Fork Big Falls School District on uh, active threats of violence. Statistically, for the month of August, we had 543 calls for service. <coughs> Conducted 148 traffic stops, issued 19 citations, assisted on 29 medicals, uh, had eight arrests, and generated 94 uh, new cases for the month. A uh, little bit, a uh, little bit quieter than 2018, so it was uh, not a bad August for us. Very good. Thank you. Questions for Chief Maston, please. Great report. Thank you for. Uh, all of those activities. We'll move to uh, Chief Manasa, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, report for activities in the month of August. For the fire department, we had nine fire department call-outs, uh, five of which were in the city. Uh, included one house fire, one commercial fire alarm, and three gas leaks. Uh, we had four rural responses, which were two car fires and then two motor vehicle accidents. Uh, we had our normal monthly meeting and training on the 15th of August, which can included a regular business meeting along with our annual hose testing. Uh, along with some of the testing stuff, uh, testing requirements that we met it, it, for this year, we also had our ladders tested and our SCBA packs tested from outside vendors as well. So all our safety certifications should be in place for the year. Ambulance for the month of August, we had uh, 90 911 calls, 46 transfers for a total of 136 runs compared to 2018 where we had 85 911s, 45 transfers for a total of 130 runs. Totals for this year for 2019 were at 601 911 calls, 308 transfers for a total of 909 runs. Uh, again, we had our monthly meeting and business, or meeting and training on the 13th of August with a regular business meeting and emergency vehicle operations. Questions for Chief Manasa. Another busy month. Yes, sir. Thank you for a good report and no further questions. Thank you. Have a good evening.
Move to reports of the uh, Mayor, Council Committees, Boards and Commissions. <coughs> Councilor Deach, please. Okay, we had our final ad hoc late committee meeting last Tuesday. Uh, roughly seven members attended. Many, uh, many things were discussed, many positives this year, that many blight issues were handled. There's still various issues that have to be handled. Um, next spring, we'll advertise for new members or members that wish to return to rebuild the committee. Uh, it seemed like our members kind of dropped as the, as the season went on, but I guess that's probably normal on the attendance. Um, one of the, the major issues that need re needed review and still does is how we're going to handle non-running automobiles on private property. And uh, this probably would include homeowners, renters, and businesses. We have several businesses that have non-running vehicles on their property. Other than that, it was a good meeting. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, be able to accomplish more next year. Very good. Questions for Councilor Deach? Mr. Mayor. Please, City Administrator. Uh, Council, I would just add that um, if, if the committee feels that it would like different or more members as part of the Ad Hoc Blight Committee, typically the uh, committee appointments are done by the City Council at the first meeting in January. So um, we would send an advertisement out sometime in perhaps October or November, try and see if there's anybody in the community interested. And, and by uh, uh, ordinance, I believe the mayor makes all the appointments and it's ratified by the city council. So we have an application process. So if that's something that your committee wants to do, then you should probably coordinate with me and, and the mayor about a process so that uh, those appointments could be made at the first meeting, the organizational meeting in January. Sounds fine. Thank you. Further uh, on committee reports? And you have the mayor's report uh, in writing. Any questions there? If not, um, we'll, again in the audience, anyone that wishes to address the council at this time? Seeing none. Oh. I, uh... I'm thinking about starting my own business, and uh, I have some homemade uh, tiramisu that I wanted to share with anybody that's here. That's part of my business, but I don't want to uh, tell the whole story yet. Okay. So I haven't got the whole story. So I don't know if you can, I don't, I'm guessing we can't eat in the chambers. <laughs> If they're somewhere within the building that we can, everybody can at least try the product, that would be great. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We can eat here. Pardon? We can eat here. Yeah, you can, we can eat here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there, there's been food, uh, on you, Walt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> been food digested here before. <laughs> Under correspondence, uh, we have the uh, Department of Health and uh, Public Library and sewer district uh, notice on smoke testing, so uh, please be aware of that. And then uh, reminders, uh, thank you to administration for that, that we have the uh, Career Force Open House on Thursday, um, special city council meeting on September the 23rd for the preliminary budget, and then the regular city council meeting will be Monday, October the 7th. Further to come before the City Council at this time? Seeing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.